This begins with a cult leader named Dove giving instructions to his followers, speaking of math and sacred numbers, telling them that the moment of transformation is upon us. Simultaneously, a few of his members grab a man off the street, drag him into the van and open him up, pulling objects out of him and weighing them, mapping out coordinates. Dove tells him finally the universe is telling them exactly where to go. Two women, Kennedy and Tess, arrive at an old bowling alley that's open on its last night before being demolished tomorrow. Tess also invited two guys, Cody and Pete, to join them. Nobody likes Pete. They go inside, unaware that the cult members are watching. Inside, Kennedy's father, Bruce, who works there, is talking to one of the employees when his daughter Kennedy walks in. She asks him to act like they don't know each other. He doesn't understand why. Then the cult members enter the bowling alley. Kennedy's father is upset that she's acting like she's never been there before and doesn't know how to bowl. He decides to go over and speak with them when Pete makes a mess on the floor. Pete says something stupid to Bruce and he grabs him and Kennedy calls him dad by mistake and she's found out. Tess wants to know why Kennedy lied. She says she's just not good at being friends. Meanwhile in the back, Star is giving the bowling alley mascot one last ride for the road. When they're done, she tells him to wait five minutes then come out, but he hears a noise and one of the cult members takes him out. Back at the lane, Cody tells Pete that he believes his girl Tess and Kennedy like each other. As the cult members chain the door so no one can leave, Kennedy is in the pro shop teaching Tess how to hold a bowling ball. She told us she had perfect thumbs. Perfect thumbs, huh? As Pete is about to bowl, he's distracted by watch alarms chiming simultaneously all over the bowling alley. Cult members emerge from everywhere with weapons. Pete is killed immediately. As the cult members begin eliminating everyone, some people try to leave but can't because the doors are chained shut. Star hears the screams and comes out of the bathroom. Seeing all the chaos and bodies, she hides behind a pool table. One of the killers walk in and she gets the drop on him. She then sees her friend, the bowling alley mascot, but it wasn't really him hiding in the costume. Bruce is listening to music on his headphones, unaware of the chaos going on in the security monitor. Kennedy and Tess were hiding, while the cult leader Dove tells his members to finish them all, they are a divine number, and we derive their sum from their sacrifice. Cody is hiding when one of the injured customers falls next to him, making a lot of noise drawing attention. Pete breaks his neck to shut him up and rubs his fluid on his face and plays dead. Pete's eyes are twitching, but the cult member can't see that well, so he chops the body next to him. Tess and Kennedy hide by the front door and call 911, but somehow one of the members answer. They run down a corridor to another set of doors and are confronted by two of the members. Kennedy takes them out with a bowling ball. Tess starts freaking out, but Kennedy tells her her father's a survivalist and he can get us out of here. Kennedy needs a walkie-talkie to communicate with her father. She finds one, but has to fight her way out against one of the cultists. Kennedy is able to contact her dad, and he finally looks at the security screen. He tells her he'll meet her in the pro shop. Bruce makes it to Kennedy at the pro shop, while Dove is making a video of the progress of the massacre. Cody, who was playing dead, tells him they'll give up Kennedy, Tess, and Bruce if they let him go. Dove says we're good and chops him up. Bruce says we need to get behind the lanes to find Albert's old shotgun. Then they're going to use Rocco Bowl as a distraction. Then Tess is about to be found when the music comes on. The Rocco Bowl distraction works and they make it to the back of the lanes. They look at the security screen and find Tess in one of the storage rooms. But when they try to break the door down, they find out that she escaped through the wall. They make it to Albert's office, but the guns are gone, so they take the bolt cutters and a few fireworks and leave. One of the members finds Tess hiding in the bathroom. They're going back to the front door, but they're found behind the lanes by one of the members. But when he hits her father, Kennedy goes crazy and eliminates him. When they come from behind the lanes, they're attacked again, but Kennedy breaks his neck with a bowling ball. They're attacked again by the mascot, but Cheryl blows him away with the shotgun. She tells Bruce to take the girl and go, then the members finish her off. They can't find Tess, so they decide to go out and get help. But when they open the door to the parking lot, they find one of the cultists is out there smoking a cigarette. Bruce uses one of his fireworks to set him ablaze. They run back inside and close the door. Then Dove puts Tess on the PA. She's begging for help, so they disguise themselves in order to save Tess. They tell the leader that the other two got away and the police will be showing up shortly. Dove says they have to finish the job by taking out Tess. They get caught, and the leader tells Bruce, finish Tess or I'll finish your daughter. Bruce tells him he'll do it, then he resets the bowling lane for a distraction. Kennedy bites him, and she's free. They're surrounded by the rest of the members, then suddenly, all their watches go off again, and they start taking themselves out. The leader then loses control and gets his head chopped off. Kennedy unties Tess, and they leave the bowling alley.